Right, hello folks, and today I'm heading up, but if you can see it over my shoulder there, and I'm going to record this whole trip. Well, I've been asked a few questions about the 360 camera, so I thought I'll just do this sole recording on my 360 camera, so you can see what it's like, and I'll be take you through some of the advantages and disadvantages. Of it. God, I'm a bit out of breath. The only time I'll not be using the camera is if I'm <laughs> showing you anything from the office, like the camera itself. I'll obviously be recording on another camera if I'm showing you the 360 camera. So, heading up this Monroe in the Alps. <laughs> and I'll report back once I'm on this ridge behind me. Let's go. Right, I'm on the ridge now, as you can probably see behind me, and it's a bit easier going, and I lied, this uh, this isn't a Monroe, well, it was a, originally a Monroe on uh, Hugh Monroe's original tables, but it's actually a Corbett, anyway, I'm talking about the camera, <laughs> remember, talking about the camera, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some of the things that I like about this camera, and I've been using it for, I don't know, three months now, and the first thing that I should mention is, and it's the same with any 360 cameras, one of the major advantages is you capture everything. So, for instance, let me see. If I'm walking along here, I can uh, I can keep the camera in the same position and go, Look at that, that view over there to that hill there is amazing. And you'll see now that I'll pan round and it'll be pointing in the direction I want to, to show you the hill. And I can also then say, well, uh, coming up to a steep section ahead of me, and once again, keeping the camera in the same position, I can, in post-editing, zoom round to the view in front of me so you'll be able to see this big cliff face above me and a steep path going up. And that's great, that's, that was one of the advantages and one of the main selling factors for me was to get get that feature. And it, obviously it captures everything in 360, but you, you edit it in post and you crop it to a 16 by 9 frame, just what you see in your telly, and you can move that around to wherever you want. So that's fantastic. It's a really good feature about it. Tell you what, these aren't bad today either. They're okay. Not too shabby, but cloud might be in at the top. So, as you can hear, I'm puffing and panting my way up here. And I'm going to be doing a bit more of that because there's a steep section coming up around these cliffs. Just behind, or just behind me, or to in front of me, behind the camera, which I'll pan around to now so you can see it. Hopefully, I'll be up there not, not too long. Right. Let's go. Lovely, look at this. Wow. <laughs> wow, what a lovely ridge this is, I'm in the mist now, it's very atmospheric over here, you can see, you can't see the top of the mountain but you can see uh, where I'm going to be going soon anyway, another advantage of this camera is, as you can see because it's 360 and, and going back to what I was talking about just a minute ago about being able to shift the 16 by 9 frame about the camera, you can, in post editing, you can get it so it's following you uh, obviously if I was just using my normal GoPro about a shot now, but I can move around and the camera can follow me or in the editing you can you can get it to follow you which is a real a real advantage as well anyway I'm, I'm yeah I'm a bit uh, a bit tired but I'm glad of this it levels out here this ridge before the final pool up into the summit where I don't think I'm going to get uh, many views but I'll go in a bit further then I'll talk about another thing I like about this camera hopefully getting nearer to the top now anyway let's go <laughs> So 
so headed up further on the ridge and into the mist. And as you get nearer the top, the ridge does narrow, and this is where I took full advantage of the 360 camera. Obviously, this is unrealistic footage, but yeah, it does it does look pretty cool sometimes. Something completely different, and you can you can get a good advantage of that invisible stick to sort of reach over the edge to look down. And I've skewed it quite a lot here with the the 360 effect, so you can see see right down. But you you, you can alter how much you skew it in the editing suite afterwards and I just had a wee play with it here so you can see the sort of different angles and different things that you can do with the Insta360. Wow, I love this part of the ridge, even in the mist, it's very very atmospheric. Anyway, another, another advantage of this camera is a couple of things, as you've maybe just seen. You can play about with the, the zoom settings, how far up you go, and you can distort the image. And you know what, you can distort it to make it look like you're in a wee globe and all that sort of stuff, but that's too... Uh, that's just personal preference really, and I, I certainly admit the first few trips out with this, like the cycle at Glen Eye and when I was on the Bookland, I don't know if they'll be out yet, but they were some of the first trips I had with this, I did play about with those a wee bit, so <laughs> but um, yeah, gives you something different and the other thing, as you can see when I'm walking the stabilisation on this device it's fantastic really is good, I think they used to call it flow state or something, so that's, that's a big advantage, but I'll come on to that also as a disadvantage later on it's certainly as good as my GoPro 7 Black, if not better really good so that's maybe good for people that do running or like to vlog as they're moving like me I don't like doing that though because <laughs> I find it hard to breathe <laughs> when I'm going uphill I'm doing my best at the moment, so there's another advantage. And also, the invisible stick, I think that's pretty cool, although it does look a bit odd. You'll see my hand down there, like I'm waiting to shake somebody's hand. So that's uh, another thing which could be seen as an advantage. Right, almost, almost there, so this is lovely. Very atmospheric. <laughs> Let's get to the top and do a bit of camera up there. After a wee bit yeah. more hiking, I was soon approaching the summit of the mountain. Although there weren't, uh, there weren't great views today. I hear that on a clear day you can see for miles and miles. But anyway, it was still quite atmospheric, and yeah, I was using that 360 camera. Oh, well, that's me approaching the uh, yeah the top of the ridge. And I'm not going to hang around. It's blooming cold. Up here, I was in the lee of the wind coming up the ridge there. What a fantastic walk this is. And the name of the mountain is Ben and Lochan, if you're wondering. Anyway, just a couple more advantages of the camera. Uh, I went for this version of the Insta360 because it's modular. And you can put other modules on it. So we're talking about the 360 module today, but you also get a 4K module. And also a 1 inch sensor module, which is the one I've gone for. And to be honest with you, I'll, I'll use that a lot more than I'll use this, especially for hiking. And... The other, other thing about this camera is it's the same shape as the GoPro, so it's, if I'm putting it on my helmet and what have you, it's just less bulky than some of the other 360 cameras out there. And uh, yeah, that was another uh, reason I went for it, but there are disadvantages, you know what? I'm going to go through them on the way down, I'm just going to have a look over here, and then I'll just head back down the ridge, I think. Oh God, it's cold! <laughs> Oh, look at that behind me, it's just, uh, it's lovely isn't it? It's where I've just been, anyway. 
And then down here you can see the mist swirling around the side of the ridge over there, very atmospheric. Anyway, back to me, I'll swing the camera back round. On my way down now, so I'll just rattle through some of the things which aren't so great about the Insta360. I think the first thing to mention is, and, and the major disadvantage for me is that you have to, or you're certainly advised to process the files in Insta's own software before then going on and re-editing them in your editing software, whatever that may be. That's a bit of a pain, uh, to be honest with you. They might fix that with any firmware or software updates in the future. Um, and the major thing for me, and this is just because I had a 10 year old computer, was <laughs> it didn't like them. And I had to go into my son's PC, which you will have heard me talk about before. I think if you watched one of my vlogs, I was talking about that. So that's a major, major disadvantage. The, uh, the sensor or the, the footage is caught in 570 or 5.7K, but when you then crop it down to the 16x9 format, uh, the maximum resolution you can get is full HD, which, is, which isn't too bad, it's okay, but certainly in this world where everything's 4K ultra high definition and even beyond, in fact even with this camera with other modules it's a 5.3K sensor, that's a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, what else is there? 360. Yeah, I suppose some people don't like the uh, unrealistic viewpoints you can get, you know, the, the distortion that you get. You get it with the GoPros as well, but you can you can certainly limit that by just, just the way you edit the, the footage, so you don't have to be walking around the globe the whole way around, <laughs> um, which, is, which is fine. And uh, I think, apart from those, I mean, the, it's pretty good. I think the, uh, the, the, there are other 360 cameras out there, and I looked at some. There's another uh, Insta360 camera and, and also the GoPro. I think both of those, the footage you get from them specifically for 360 is better than you get from the 360 module on this because this is a bit thicker. So when they cut the uh, the 180 views together or stitch them together, it's a bit better with the other ones. But they don't have the modular feature. So they're just purely 360 cameras. This one gives the, uh, gives the option of doing other things using the 4K module and the 5.3K module and what have you. Apart from that, it's pretty good. Look at that. Cloud seems to be clearing now. <laughs> a wee bit from the top. Typical. That always happens, though, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to put this away now. I hope that's been uh, been of use. And uh, yeah, I'm going to head back down to the car, which is way down, way down yonder. So uh, yeah, until the next time, take care. I'll see you in the next adventure. Right, let's get back down. <laughs> Right guys, hopefully uh, you got something out of that. This is just a Sunday vlog, so just trying to answer some of your queries and obviously I've been asked a lot about the Insta360 camera, but there were a few things that I forgot to mention. So what I'll do, this, this very last bit of the video, is I'll just run through the advantages and then the, one, the bits and bobs that I forgot to mention and the disadvantages as well as an overview. So, <coughs> as I mentioned, the advantages, you capture everything, you don't miss anything, so you can put the camera anywhere. You can set it up so it looks like it's following you, which is great. The great stabilisation. You've got that invisible selfie stick, which <laughs> makes it look... Yeah, it's, it's a different angle, shall we say. Um, yeah, the, the post-editing, you can do you know, you can do whatever you want. You can distort the image, which I'm not a big fan of, but uh, you'll have seen some of the videos that I've done, uh, I've used it. It's just for a bit of fun. Um, it's modular as well, so this actually comes to bits. This is the camera here, and you can take the battery off, take the 360 camera off, and put the other cameras on. And I've got the, the one inch sensor here, which I'll come on to in just a wee while. I use this a lot more than I use this, I must say. So it's modular, which is great. Um, the, the shape of it as well is, is pretty similar to the GoPro, you can see it's a very similar shape and that's another reason I went for it because the fittings are all very similar and as I said you can put it on your helmet. Um, one of the advantages I didn't talk about is it's so easy um, to set up and just record your, your videos, it's, a, it's great for lazy vlogging. So you could just pop it down on the stick on the, on the ground, even if it's wonky you can 
you can then crop it in post editing and uh, it makes vlogging pretty quick and pretty easy and the stabilisation as I said is pretty good so it's good for that. Um, disadvantages, well, there's quite a few disadvantages, the main one and as I mentioned was the uh, additional post processing step so you have to you don't have to, it does work with certain software like um, Ade I think Adobe Premiere, you can put the file straight into there, but I've got PowerDirector and um, I just found the Insta Studio easier to convert the 360 files um, into uh, MPEG-4s to then use in PowerDirector. Disadvantage again, it's big files, the 360 cameras, 5.7K file so you do need a decent computer uh, I've actually got a new computer now um, as you maybe heard me talk about in a previous vlog which is great so it processes everything but if you've not got that if you don't have a if you've got an old computer and it's not very powerful it's maybe something you need to think about and also I've had big problems with big big problems with this even with the new computer this is the one in, one inch sensor but I'll come on to that right at the end um, Another disadvantage, uh, although the files are 5.7K, when you crop them down to the 16x9 format, it's only 1080p, that's the highest you can get at the moment. Another disadvantage is that the distortion you get on it if you edit it so it's like a globe and it's just it's just skewed and you don't get a, a realistic, it doesn't look anything like what it is in real life. But as I said, that can be an advantage as well. You can use your artistic license with these sort of things, um, which is which is great. Another another disadvantage is, I think there are, if you're looking for a 360 camera, there are better ones out there um, which are thinner, so you don't get as much of a line across the screen, which you sometimes pick up in the in the videos. But as I said, I, I wanted this chunkier one because it was modular and uh, it, it has the fittings more similar to, uh, more, more practical to what I do if I've got it on helmet cam or what have you. Um, some disadvantages I didn't talk about, if there's any, if it's raining, or if there's any dirt on the lens, it does tend to show up quite a lot because when you crop it down into the 16x9 format you do notice it. Uh, another <laughs> big disadvantage, and I've already got a scratch on here, is it's very hard to protect these lenses, There's a, there is a protector that goes on them, but if you're filming, you obviously, you obviously can't have the protector on them. I think you can get guards, but it, it decreases the, the picture quality, or so I've read. So it's dead easy to, to damage these, and I've already got a chip on uh, one side, and there's no real easy way to replace the lenses. So that's a major um, major disadvantage, and it's another yeah another disadvantage. I think I talked about was a resolution, uh, and and it's it's not cheap. Um, when you get all the modules put together, it uh, it does it does add up. But yeah, hopefully if they bring out any new modules, you can just hopefully you'll be able to just sort of upgrade and put them on. So that might counterbalance the initial expense. Anyway, just just quickly to finish off, the, the one inch sensor I've used lots and you do get cracking image quality from it. It's one inch and it's 5.3k but my god this has been a world of pain editing. As I said I use PowerDirector, I've got the latest version of PowerDirector, I've got a powerful computer and I'm still having issues with these files when I'm taking them across the first few seconds freeze uh, for some reason. The audio then, when I when I convert them and drag them across into PowerDirector, the audio and the the, um, the actual video don't match and it's out of sync. And oh, it's just a complete pain in the backside. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's up to yourself whether but you know what you think of this. Um, you'll have seen the footage. I did do a video completely shot on this, which was out last week. Um, and you'll you'll see that that's where me and, me and Jerry went up the the hills near Crew and Larica with Bob Benmore Farm. That was solely shot on this. I'll put a link up here somewhere so you can see what the footage is like from that. But yeah, that's the Insta 360. So yeah, leave your comments below. Uh, let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you on Wednesday for another another adventure. Hopefully, when I'm back to normal vlogging. Right, I need to go and edit some more videos. Now.